Like, yeah. Um, so this is, this is the inevitable follow-up video that I was kind of referencing in my reaction video where I'd be talking about the momentous moment, the thing that everyone is like, the previews for AMC, you watch the episode for the moment everyone will be talking about their expert-level marketing tactics. Oh, well, the reason I'm talking about it is because I'm I'm conflicted over it. I mean, you saw in my reaction last night, I didn't know whether to throw my support behind the episode or not. Like, there were many other moving parts to it. Uh, you know, there were moments with Dwight, moments with Ezekiel, moments with Maggie. There were some big character moments for other characters. Um, <clears throat> and even though the episode really had this central focus on, you know, what... Carl was doing. Um, man, it's th there was some extra information that I found out today, which kind of complicates. Because in, in our reaction last night, we were talking about like, oh, this is probably because Chandler Riggs wanted to go to college. Uh, he was eighteen, or is going to be eighteen, or he turned eighteen this year, and he had plans, and that probably complicates his life, and he doesn't have time to film the show, and therefore, um, he's probably asking to be killed off. Um. I'm also assuming if you're watching this video, you know, continuing to watch it, you're probably aware of um, what happened. In last night's mid-season finale, um, I have this titled as being spoiler, so I hope anyone who's still on the video is not intending to comment that I spoiled stuff for them. So just know what you're getting into. Um, so yeah, Carl died on last night's episode, and uh, an A-lister... One of the original Atlanta team, like, like the, the main character's son. If now we're going to say definitively that Rick Grimes is the main character, is no longer his fucking son, patching, passing off the torch of, you know, him growing up in this apocalypse and trying to do some good, like his, his, his comic book counterpart does, no. Apparently, it is going to be Rick Grimes and, uh, you know, maybe Judith, if she, you know, is born in the apocalypse and survives it. Who knows? Um... Yeah, so that happened. Um, there were rumors about it, and uh, the, the you know the fucking spoiling dead obviously found out about it, and they were keeping their silence because the actor actually reached out to them and said, "Hey, I know you guys spoil every fucking possible thing on this show, but for once, can you not say anything? Because I put a lot of hard work into this show, and I don't want it spoiled." I will give a little bit of credit to the Spoiling Dead because they did follow Chandler Riggs' wishes and didn't spoil it. That was the reason. I was mentioning that the Spoiling Dead were not, they weren't say, they weren't revealing the big spoiling moment because they, they you know, they couldn't explain it, they didn't want to say anything. Uh, but then they broke their silence uh, last night, today, and they said that it was because the actor reached out to them personally and said, we really, you know... It's, it's, you know, he's leaving the show. He's like, I, I don't really fucking feel like having my death spoiled. It's a big moment. It's a shocking mo Probably the the most shocking moment in the whole fucking show. Like, I don't know in the the, the rest of the span of what this show has, I don't know if there's going to be a, something that's more shocking than this. Because it's something, for me, like, it's interesting because it's something that comic book readers would never expect. Because, again, like, I, I read through them. I know the comic storyline. And so, for me, I'm like, okay... You know, Carl has so much more story. He's involved with the Whisperers. He you know, he has a girlfriend. You know, he helps Maggie co-rule the hilltop. And, uh, you know, his, the drama with him and Lydia and Alpha and all the Whisperer members. You know, that's a big plot line and blah, blah, blah. I'm, so I'm thinking all these things in my head. I'm like, yeah, so based on all of that, there's no way that Carl would die. And, uh, you know, of course, I, you know, just... I am completely 100% off the mark, apparently. The two things that were rumored this season, Morales coming back and fucking Carl dying. Of course, both things that were rumored, both things that I said, no, that, that can't possibly happen, and they uh, ended up happening. Uh, so now, from now on, whenever I hear some ridiculous rumor, I'm just going to think it's true, because those rumors usually start from the fucking spoiling dead, people who go out to the goddamn set... Again, like any, they figured it out because you know they stalked the film set, saw how consistently the actor was showing up, and then when they didn't see him showing up enough, they knew he was dead. That's the same thing they did when Glenn and Abraham died. They just looked for Michael Cutlets and Stephen Yun on set, and when they weren't on set, they're like, oh, they died. So it's it's stupid. I don't know like, these people just have fucking way too much free time. Like after work, it's like, oh, go to go to the set of The Walking Dead and post pictures for the internet so I can you know get some self satisfaction in knowing what happens before the fucking show. 
I don't know. Again, as a creator, if I was on the Walking Dead creative team, I'd be pissed. You know, you want people to enjoy the medium in the way you want them to. You don't want people knowing this information. And, you know, Game of Thrones had a major problem with this in Season 7 to the point where I made a video about it. Spoilers were not bad in the past with it, but I think Season 7 was, you know, the whole pl plot of the fucking season got spoiled. Right off the bat. Like, literally from beginning to end. Like, the final moment of Season 7 for Game of Thrones. Like, everything. Everything was spoiled. Um, I, I don't know. Just it's the age of the internet. I mean, people just I don't know. They just it, no lies. They just figure out where people film shit, and they just like, well, I guess I can go out there. And I guess there's not enough police enforcement or just enforcement in general, and it, they just get away with it. So, uh, yeah, because it ruins stuff like this. Like Chandler Riggs had to go out of his way to contact these fucking people. Like they have some clout. Like they're nobodies. The people that run the spoiling dead page are absolute nobodies. And now, like an actor on the show has to like plead with them not to spoil information because they're getting tips, tip-offs from someone who works on the set who's breaking contract or something. I don't know what, I don't know how they're doing it. Um, I don't want this whole video to turn into a rant against the spoiling dead. I already have a video about that where I shit all over them. Um, but again, I'm giving them a little credit here because they actually didn't spoil this. Uh, the thing is, I want to say they didn't spoil it, but they kind of did. Like, they made a post where they were talking about rumors of Carl dying. They, sh they showed, you know, clues in how much he's been on set. And, like, anyone with a brain could deduce what happens without them blatantly saying it. So they kind of led people on to what happened anyway instead of just saying it outright. So, I don't know. Honestly, you couldn't have been too surprised. But for me, like, aside from all the spoiling stuff, it's... It, the whole death is just problematic, all right? Now, I, for me, I, I think I'm going to go on the problematic route because I, it, just, it just is. It's just really problematic. And there's this uh, interview that was done that Chandler Riggs did with Entertainment Weekly. And it actually shed some light on some things people... Like, people wanted to know. Like, why was he killed off? Did they, again, I go back to the beginning. The, the, the point I made last night, the point I made at the start of this video... Uh, was it because he wanted to move on? Did he make the decision? Did he go to Scott Gimple and say, look, I've had it. I've, I've been with this show since 2010. You know, I was a kid. Now I'm, you know, I'm, I'm technically an adult. I want to live my life, go to college, and maybe try some other shows instead of being tied to The Walking Dead forever. Because, again, his ca character is still alive in the comics, and it's a character that probably could be, outlive Rick and still, you know, just, just be the guy. Like, be this mainstay you know, lead, like, like, I could see every other character dying off and Carl being the last one, you know, carrying the torch. You know, and probably starting up civilization when all other threats are defeated, when the, either the zombies are defeated or other, you know, rival civilizations. Whatever they end up doing for the finale of The Walking Dead, like, when the show ends, ends. Uh, I always thought that Carl would be one of the last people as, you know, as the person who grew up in the apocalypse and had experience... And knew the world from its old state, but also could, it changed with the world from going maybe to... And, you know, in seasons three and four, he kind of had a cold killer mentality as the comic book character was. And, but then his humanity came out. And that was big in this previous episode. His humanity... I mean, you even see Negan. I love that scene where Negan and Carl are talking at the gate. You see Negan breaking, like, emotionally. Like, you know, he's kind of almost taken in Carl's point. Like, maybe there is some way to, you know, humanize and, you know, it's it's that underlying pain that Negan carries around from when his wife died. So, you know, Carl you know, kind of brings out a side that he didn't think he had. So, it's cool, but, again, so, we get into this. Um, so, this was all Sadiq's mom's fault, wasn't it? Um, uh, yeah, I guess so, yeah. That's funny. Yeah, so, for anyone who's wondering where he got bit, it was episode 6 of season 8. You know the scene when he falls on the deer and the zombies are attacking him? There's a scene where he's wrestling with one zombie and he kind of pushes it to the side and then another one falls on him. Uh, and then he uh, gets bit. I wonder if I could bring this up real quick. Because um, I could probably pinpoint the exact moment where it happened. Let me see here. So it happens. It's right here, actually. You can see it. Actually, that was pretty good. Uh, so he's wrestling with this one zombie. And you see, he's wrestling with this one. And look what happens. You see the second? You see right here? It's right here. He's wrestling with that one zombie. And then this one 
leans over and bites him. But the show doesn't. Sh it, but they don't show it. They just go to Sadiq's perspective. It almost looks like Sadiq's get bit. Look at this. Kind of looks like he does too. Like he misses it. He misses it by like an inch. And then, and then this is where Carl kind of gets bit. Yeah, but they didn't really show it was the problem. They didn't really show it. And I don't think they show you like when he gets up. Like I don't think they really show you when that happens. Like it's right here. You see the I think the wound actually is kind of bloody right there. The way he's acting and stuff, yeah. Because so much, I mean, my friend said it best, so much of Epis, the mid-season finale was Carl sacrificing himself. He asked Negan to kill him if everyone would survive. When everyone escaped, Carl stayed inside when there's freaking, you know, bombs going off and getting explosions, you know, putting himself in danger. Like, because he knew, he knew he was a dead man. It was the same thing with Bob, basically, because Bob knew he was a dead man and he was staying outside and he was acting weird. And then the whole tainted meat scene happened and he kind of reveled. And it was almost like a weird victory that he, you know, they were eating him. But <laughs> he had the last laugh in a weird way. But, um, so here, we're going to just jump right into this. This is from Entertainment Weekly. Um, this was the interview he did. So he jokes that, you know, it was Sadiq's mom's fault. So tell me how and when you found out this would be going on. Uh, I found out in June when we were rehearsing for episode six. Scott Gimple called me to meet with me and my mom and my dad to talk about story stuff. And then he revealed that Carl would be dying in episode 9. It was devastating because the show has been such a big part of my life. I had gone to school and done the show and dedicated so much time and effort into the show that it was crazy. That that was going to be the direct decision. I was so excited to do the storylines from the comics. But I guess it does make sense for Rick to kind of have to adopt this humanitarian lifestyle that Carl has an outlook on right. Um, so now we're going to get to the reason that this happens. And this, again, this makes sense, and it also doesn't make sense. And you'll see why, right? Uh, you say it makes sense. What did Scott say was his reasoning for doing it? Because contrary to what fans may think, he does not kill main characters lightly. Uh, so it says his reason behind it was that in the comics, after All Out War, again, this is some comic book spoilers, Negan gets taken prisoner. So to figure out a way to make Rick not want to kill Negan... Uh, would have to be that Carl sees things from a different perspective and try to push those ideals on Rick. That was kind of touched on in the flashback where Carl's talking about uh, talking to Rick and how they can't kill all the saviors and not everyone is a bad person. Because even Carl has grown so much over the past eight seasons, especially season three to four. I think episode nine is really going to focus on Carl trying to teach Rick as much as he can. So that's the other thing. Like Even though we know Carl's a dead man, he doesn't die in episode eight. Basically, the bite just confirms he's going to die at some point. The mid-season premiere will be his last episode because he'll probably just be... The fever will be burning him out and he'll be just trying to get as much off of his chest and admit as much to his dad as possible before he uh, before he dies, basically. And we saw in the premiere, Rick is stand the, the sneak peek to the premiere, Rick is standing over a grave uh, gravestone uh, where they buried other people in Alexandria with Michonne. So that we know that's confirmed. And it's just, it's surreal to see it, man. Again, like, in your head, you build up these characters who are just not going to die. Like, for me, like, if anything, this kind of throws everything off for the show because it's like anyone can die now. Like, really, like, you thought that there were certain characters who just, in my mind, I was like, they're safe. They're not going to die 100%. Carl's a young kid. He's the future of the show. Um, he, he has comics, he has story in the comic, like, all these things I rationalized in my head, and Scott Gimple's just like, nope, and the justification, as you just saw, was not because Chandler Riggs wanted to go to college, it's because this is the, because, and I have said this to my friends, I was saying to them, you know, Neg in the comics, Rick doesn't have his hatred towards Negan, it's not on this level. Like, he obviously goes to war with Negan and doesn't like him and tries to kill him, but Rick doesn't, like, the, like some of the events don't happen the way they do, and Rick 
the hatred that Rick portrays for Negan in the show is so heightened. In your mind, you're like, how could Rick not kill Negan, basically? Like, seriously, after what Negan's done, like, how the fuck would Rick not kill Negan at this point? Um, so, this is basically the best... So, I, I imagine Scott was stuck, plot-wise. He was probably like, how the fuck is... Or how, the, how are we going to pull this off? How is Negan going to live? Because the audience is going to call bullshit... And, Rick has declared two times that he will kill Negan. He says, not today, not tomorrow, that he will kill him. He said that twice he, you know, he gave all of Negan's lieutenants a way out, but he did not give Negan a way out. Um, so there needs to be some justification. So Carl dying and basically almost like a Dale situation. Like, you know how they kept Randall alive in season two uh, because Dale's, you know, dying wish was that they not kill Randall because, it, you know, they didn't listen to, you know, they didn't get enough information out of Randall. They were making a rash decision. It was a person's life. Dale had a lot of humanity in him and they kind of made that decision. They were going to make it rashly and then when he died suddenly by a zombie, um, they honored his last wishes by, you know, until Shane fucking did it, but, you know, he was always defying everybody at that point, so, this is maybe similar, where Carl, you know, is probably the one that can, if anyone can have the most impact, it's fucking his own flesh and blood, so he, he basically, his dying wishes to, you know, has, keep his humanity, you know, and then Rick will fight a little bit more of the war, I, you know, I, it's gonna be tough, I don't know, um, what was your reaction when you first found out this was going down? So I honestly... So listen, again, like Chandler Riggs planned on being on the show for much longer. All right? We're going to get into this. I honestly thought Scott Gimple was joking the first time he said it because Scott has a pretty good sense of humor and we joke a lot. So I thought he was joking. When I realized he wasn't, it was quite the shocker because I was looking forward to the story arc from the comic with another group, The Whisperers. Carl has a really, really cool interaction with one of the members of that group. Uh, and I was super excited to do that whole storyline. But in terms of typecasting in my career, it's the best move for me. My acting career in general is definitely not going to be a bad thing. So this is Chandler Riggs trying to basically spin the situation into not being a bad one. He's like, well, you know, I got killed off the show. But at the same time, this opens up my career to do things that aren't just a, a you know a TV drama. Like now I can do, you know, com. He was talking. He's like, oh, I'm, you know, I can try comedy. And he, now he's trying and testing different things um, because he's not tied down to he's been tied down to this show for years and so now he kind of has a chance to do stuff that you know might interest him uh, that he wants to do outside of just this drama television show um, <sighs> fucking hell um, so this was what I was mentioning to you guys he actually in, again in the comics Carl dates one of the members of the Whisperers um, this girl, Lydia, who is the daughter of the leader, the leader of the Whispers, her daughter dates Carl. And that dynamic sparks how Rick kind of gets involved with the Whispers originally before they start attacking. I don't know how the hell they're going to pull this off now. Now that Carl, because Carl was the main anchor from Rick's group to this other group. And now that he's dead, I don't see how they're going to pull that off. I really don't. Um, unless, like, people have had a couple theories. They've said maybe Judith ages up and they do a gender swap so for example in alexandria we had douglas monroe and you might be saying well who's douglas monroe in the comics it was a guy who was in charge of alexandria and his name was douglas uh, and in the show they do a gender swap and in instead of douglas it's deanna deanna and she's in charge she's a woman and she's in charge instead of it being douglas and a man in charge funny thing is <clears throat> Um, Douglas looks exactly like uh, Reg in the show. Um, so, honestly, if they wanted the guy to be in charge, they could have just swapped Reg and had Reg be in charge. And they just swapped the names, too, because D D um, D Douglas's wife in the comics is named Regina. Uh, and then the show, the guy version is Reg. So you saw how they just kind of flipped the names. So... What I'm, so similarly, if Judith grows up and the maybe the leader of the Whisperers has a son instead, and then there's you know some type of uh, dynamic that comes from that, but what that would then require the show to time jump. You're talking like, because uh, how old is Judith? Like two, three years old? You would, that would have to be like. 
I don't even know how you would do that because ten like let's say you jump ten years. You know, Negan's in prison. Rick's an old guy. Everyone's running their life. But then we we would skip a lot of like I don't know if the show wants to go, take us through Judith being young. Like you know, in the flash forward where Rick is envisioning that whole vision when he's an old man with the cane and then Judith runs up to him and she's like a little girl. Are they going to follow her life as a little girl? Or are they just going to age her up to a teenager where she's having interactions that Carl would have? Like, there's so many things to consider. Oh, my God. Oh. <clears throat> this just complicates everything because now it's like Judith is... The new Carl, you know, Judith is dead in the comics at this point. So that's a pretty big thing. You know, Judith died back in the prison scene in the comics, but in this show, she survives that. Tyrese saves her, and she now she's still alive. And for me, that's been interesting because, conversely, just like how Carl is now dead and won't be playing out any of his comic book roles, Judith is playing rule, roles that were never written in the comics because she's dead in the comics. So it's interesting for me to see what happens with her moving forward, but... Now it's almost really sad because she doesn't grow up with her older brother. Like, she's... She literally doesn't grow up with her older brother. She, you know, probably will have fleeting memories of him as she grows older and just will forget about him, literally. It'll just be Rick and Michonne she'll grow attached to. And, you know, Rick will probably tell her about him, but... <laughs> that's kind of sad when you think of it that way. Um, and then the other character that people have been speculating has been Henry, who is the brother of Benjamin uh, in the kingdom, uh, the kid that follows Carol into the woods a few episodes back. Um, <clears throat> I don't like this theory because Henry, he's a minor character, okay? He's a minor character. He's the brother of someone who we only just got to know. He was, a, he was only in one season and he got shot and killed. Sure, he was the catalyst for why the, the kingdom and Morgan joined the fight against the saviors, but at the same time, uh, it it really wasn't... He, they were minor... They were just civilians. They were just civilians living... You know, the, he's no more important than Tobin or Scott, you know, how important they would be to Alexandria, for example. They're minor characters within a community. Same thing with Henry. He's a minor character. We know nothing about him. And there's been, he had one brief scene with Carol where he's being a stubborn kid. Like, let me fight. I want to avenge my brother. Let me fight. And that's literally all we've had. Like, to say that he would take on Carl's role would just be ludicrous. And, like, who would be his, his parent figure? Carol? Morgan? Ezekiel? Like, I, like, how would you pull it off? Like, I don't know. For me, aging up Judith would be the best decision because she, you know, is a, a Grimes. She's related to Carl, so it would make sense for a sibling of Carl to take over the role for him. I don't know. Oh, it's going to be it's going to be interesting. Now like, the, like a huge monkey wrench has been thrown into the show and for me like on one hand it's exciting because now like I really don't know what to expect, but on the other hand on the other hand, uh, it it just it makes me think like I don't want the show to go downhill because of this. Like I don't want risks to be taken more and more because of this and the show just divulges into you know we just it, it becomes unrecognizable and you know i i know that the show's viewership has been teetering around the eight million range uh you know way down from the season seven premiere i know some people i've already discussed this you know why the ratings might have dropped a little bit and again i see comments if you go to the facebook account for the walking den you click the comment section there are so many people who are just bitching and bitch. like every I, I almost make jokes i sometimes make jokes in the comments people are get so frustrated like oh the show is bad lazy writing why did this happen but i but then again every single show has somebody complaining about something game of thrones people have been complaining especially season seven people didn't like the pacing of it there were some things people didn't like I guess there's no show that can't be put under scrutiny. Uh, I guess that's just, you know, everyone finds something to bitch about. Um, so, continuing with this, I know I went on a little tangent, but I'm getting all my thoughts out in this video. Um, th again, this was everything I wanted to say last night. And I was with my friends, and the video would have been fucking two hours if I did it. So I need to make it separate. Um, so, uh, continuing with this, a lot of people would say the comics are really just as much... 
about Carl as Rick, and that we may be seeing that transfer of power from father to son there, which we will now not see here on the TV show. That has to make this the biggest change from the comics, right? Absolutely, especially with how much Robert Kirkman values Carl's character. So, immediately, did Robert Kirkman know about this? Like, I'm a, did I, I, I have to believe that Scott Gimple and Robert Kirkman come to agreements on where things are headed in the show. Robert Kirkman has been on the couch on The Talking Dead many times talking about where the show is going. He's obviously involved in the creative process. I think he's an executive producer, is he not? Um, so, and Chandler Rick says it. Robert Kirkman values Carl's character a lot, and you, that is evident in the fucking comic books, especially, you know, during the events of All Out War, after the events of All Out War. It just, again, it baffles me how they came to this decision. Like, like, I think this was the last thing anyone expected any of the cast members. I remember talking to Andrew Lincoln and Elena Masterson after I found out and everybody else found out and no one could believe it at all because it was so out of left field that I don't think anyone saw it coming exactly. All of the actors are literally channeling everything that the fans are feeling right now. <clears throat> How did you want to approach the big scene with you and Negan and Alexandria Wall where you teach him... I was actually really looking forward to that scene because I remember reading the script and I was like, oh, that is so cool. I can't wait to do that. And filming was definitely fun, although it was also kind of sad because it was my last scene with Jeffrey. Yeah, that's another thing. Carl and Jeffrey Dean Morgan, like, Carl and Negan in the comics after this have such a dynamic. Like, they become friends and you see this friendship sizing up. In, remember last season when Carl gets the tour of the sanctuary and he's with Negan and Negan takes a liking to him? I, I, I don't understand. They set all of these things up and it's like, no, and again, I, I also said this. Carl has had almost like no airtime in this half. He literally in the first, everything, he, every scene he's had has been about Sadiq. The scene where he's looking for gasoline, he runs across Sadiq. Um... In the flashback, he talks to his dad about why they should help people like Sadiq. Then in episode 6, he finds Sadiq, talks to him, gets bitten while trying to kill fucking walkers with him, and then goes back to Alexandria and moping around, writing letters of, you know, this is my last wishes, and then sacrifices himself during the 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 fucking carpet bombing that fucking Negan does. And that's, that's the end. And then he goes in the sewer and basically is like, my deed is done, and he pretty much dies. <clears throat> shows Carl being a leader. And the thing is, at least that he's dying, I do agree with this. Chandler Riggs is saying that, you know, it shows Carl being a leader, standing up for himself, uh, that he's willing to sacrifice himself for the greater good. It's pretty cool because, you know, they said in an interview that even if Carl wasn't bit, that he would still do that, which is pretty cool. So, you know, it's basically, I guess if you're really killing Carl off here, he comes full circle because he kind of, he, he, he becomes a man. He steps into Rick's shoes in this episode. He defends Alexandria. He confronts Negan. You know, he's literally being, you know, throw, you know, explosions are being thrown at him and he's, you know, wafting through it. And, you know, he basically almost like comes to the end of his journey, basically. I guess you could, in, in the way they filmed it and executed it with all of that, yes. But they did it because he knew that he was bit. If he wasn't bit, he probably would have been a lot more reserved. He wouldn't have taken risks running by cars that are on fire and explosions like i don't think he would have done that um i want to see how long we're going on this video it's pretty long yeah um everyone talks about the walking dead family how difficult was it you all these final weeks it was really weird especially because once the script came out everybody was treating me like i was actually getting killed everyone was like are you okay and i'd be like yeah i'm totally fine i'm moving out to la in a month it's actually oh yeah well he has a new life i guess um so it was weird but everyone was really nice. We had a death dinner. It was really helpful that I had made up my mind. Yeah. So he, he took a life choice, though, because if he had stayed on the show, he mentioned that he probably would have... Like, he was about to... He was in the process of buying a place in Georgia. Uh, he, was in the, he would have chosen a college with, like, a few classes so he could have done the show and classes. Like, again, he structured his life to stay on the show it's not like he went into this saying oh i'm going to college i want to be killed off no this was all scott's decision this was all scott gimbal's decision i have no fucking clue why 
I don't know if Robert Kirkman had a hand in it. I, I Like he said, I doubt it because Kirkman cherishes the character in the comics. I don't know why Kirkman would go along with this. Isn't he the guy who has the executive say on all these matters? Kind of like how George R. R. Martin has the executive say in Game of Thrones. Like, I don't know the, how the creative process works. Was saying goodbye hard. That definitely sucks, knowing that I was going to have to say goodbye to all the cast and crew. The crew especially because a lot of them have been there since day one. Because with the cast, I'm always going to see them at conventions and whatnot. I saw Scott Weldon this past weekend, but with the crew, I don't know when I'm going to see them again. <sighs> yeah. I'm glad he has an optimistic view. Like, I gotta give Chandler Riggs credit, because he is a big... He is an op, He's optimistic. He's like, I'm in L.A. now. I mean, he's, You know, he probably made a decent amount of money off of this, obviously. And now he's focusing on his music, living in L.A. And, you know, so at least he he's his head is good at personally where he, you know, his life's at. Um, and then he talks about what it's been to grow up. What's the thing you're most proud of? Uh, I'm definitely proud of how I've grown as an actor. Um, in my opinion, I was so bad on those audition tapes. Yeah, I was 10. I'd done a couple of other things. Um, you know, that is one thing. I know Chandler Riggs looks back at his performances and say that he could improve. Like, again, like, he's not the best child actor. I mean, if you look at the Stranger Things kids, like, you know, that's some good acting. But I've never really preferred Carl's acting all that much. Like, I've never... You know, he, he was never one of my favorite characters. He was always a character that was there, and I was always kind of waiting for him to have bigger moments. And the bigger moments really, like, yeah, they came in some waves, but, like, I don't know, like, they, they never, ever felt entirely justified, you know? And I don't know, it's just so weird how they fucking handled this whole thing, man. Oh, my God, what, what can you say about playing this out? Carl is going to spend his every last moment trying to teach Rick everything that he can about what he has learned because Carl has been watching and observing Rick. Carl has grown into his wise old soul and can see past his hate and anger that Rick has for Negan. Yeah, so he's basically going to help him influence his decision not to kill him. That's what he's saying. Now, there's one more thing before I sign off this video that I want to show you guys because it's very interesting. Um, I want to pull it up. Uh, let me see here if I can find it. Really stupid photos of my thing here. Uh, oh, no, wait. Actually, I didn't send it to this account. I sent it to another one. Um, ah, here we go. It was it was this. Um, let's see. Uh, you guys can't really see. It's fine. Um, so, apparently, Chandler Riggs' dad, William Riggs, responded... If it's to believe that this is him, and there were a couple of news outlets that picked this up, so I think it's legitimate, and he responded to this, um, talking about his kid leaving the show. Um, this, apparently someone by the name of Tammy Lau Nettles, I don't know who the hell that is, um, Chandler Riggs' dad autographed post, again, I don't know where this came from. Um, so Chandler Riggs' dad, Zombie Road Trip Riggs, says, Watching Gimple fire my son two weeks before his 18th birthday after telling him they wanted him for the next three years was disappointing. I never trusted Gimple or AMC, but Chandler did. I know how much it hurt him, but we do absolutely know how lucky we have been to be a part of it all and appreciate all the love from the fans over all these years. That's kind of a weird two-sided message. Oh, you know, I hate Gimple for doing this, but on the other hand, he's like, well, yeah, I really appreciate that my son was in the biggest drama television show, you know, record numbers and everything. Like, I don't know. I mean, there is a little bit of selfishness. I mean, be grateful that your son was on a show for eight fucking years. I mean, how many kids can say they were on a drama television show for eight years? Guess what? The Stranger Things kids are not going to be on Stranger Things for eight years because they're going to grow up too much, and the creators of that show have already said they're only going to do it for uh, four seasons max because the kids are going to get too old, and they the show only works with the kids being at a certain age where it's relatable. So um, you won't have, you know, there aren't many child actors, if any, that go on a show for eight years. You know, that's an accomplishment. Um... So be grateful for that, but on the other hand, 
I don't know if this was true. When was this ever promised? Telling him they wanted him for the next three years. The next, because that would have covered, if we're to believe that season nine will cover part of the Whisperers, that would cover part of that. That would jump into the Whisperer storyline. Um, and s again, I don't know when this was public. I don't know. Um, I don't know how much of this is to be believed, but it definitely seems like there's some anger, and it also, again, proves that this was not Chandler Riggs' decision to go to college. Again, I know in our reaction we were, because we didn't know this, we were kind of, and not shitting on Chandler Riggs, but kind of almost blaming him, like, oh, he wanted to go to college, and he asked to be killed off the show. Kind of like how the actor who played Dale kind of asked to be killed off the show because he was friends with Frank to dare about and when Frank got fired off the show the actors that were close to him were like well why do we want to stay um so kind of the same thing there um so yeah I I've rambled a lot I've said a lot my voice is killing me um but I you know this I'm gonna make one more video reviewing because this isn't really a review I'm gonna rev I'm gonna make one more video doing my mid C I do this every year. I do the, 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 the halfway, you know, episodes one through eight of the season, my review, like, what did I think? Um, and I'm not going to give those thoughts now. Um, I'm going to do it in another vlog. This vlog has been exclusively about Carl death and all the drama and confusion. I think more confusion than anything. There were a lot of people who were upset, but for me, I'm just like, what the like, I don't get it. Like, I don't understand the creative decision. Like, again, it's not it's not because I'm a fan of Carl's character. It's just because it it, it messes with the formula of your show. Um I, I don't know, I'm trying to find a comparison that you could have. Because I I, it, I don't want to use Game of Thrones as a comparison because I could say, oh, what if this character was killed off earlier? Because there are so many characters that get killed off randomly in Game of Thrones, so the show could still work. And that's the whole lore of that show, that anyone can die at any time. You know, even though the show is pretty much about Jon Snow and Daenerys, and, you know, they're the characters that have lived through this whole thing to season 8. Um, even so, um, it, it's debatable. And I, I don't know another show that I could fucking name that... If the character was killed off, it would change the course of the show just so radically. Just so, 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 so radically. I understand that Carl only being in episodes 1, 6, and 8. Like, I didn't notice. Like, again, like I, Rick is my favorite character. Rick Grimes is my absolute favorite character. I, and I don't know if I would put this contingency up that, up that if Rick died that I would quit the show. Because for me, that would be the du absolute dumbest decision. Like, I'm already kind of thinking this is a dumb decision with Carl. But Rick, in my opinion, is the main character of this entire show. It's, he's the one who wakes up from the coma. We follow him. This is his adventure. And if he were to fucking die before someone... You know, he should be the last guy. Rick should be the last man standing in this whole fucking conflict. But if, you know if he were to die like you know at the end of season eight or earlier and the show's still going on i'd be like why the fuck am i still watching this like seriously if you deviate from the comics that much and i don't i don't know i don't know because i always liked that the show followed the comics but amended it that was always my favorite thing like because kirkman has said there are some things he's done in the comics that he regrets for example he makes rick lose his right hand to the governor. The governor chops off his hand. Uh, and Kirkman does not do that in the show because he thought, A, it would be expensive to always have fucking, you know, Andrew Lincoln with CGI. And B, it limits Rick physically in fights, in conflicts. And it's easier, it's much easier to draw in the comics than it is to portray in a show. Uh, so that's a good change. I like that. Um, uh, Carol and Morgan's characters. In the comics, they're wimpy characters that are really boring and die off really quickly. Uh, but in the TV show, they're badasses that have had very dynamic arcs. So, there you go. Um, I don't know, man. And then there's the big, big hint that with Lenny James going to Fear the Walking Dead, that he'll probably die at the end of Season 8. Um, that's not confirmed, but... Scott seems to be saying that, yeah, he left the cast of the original show. So if he left the cast, 
doesn't that mean he's not filming anymore for The Walking Dead? Like, I, he has to die in some way at the end of season eight, right? <sighs> so that's frustrating. Um, I, again, that's not confirmed, but it seems like Gimple's trying to confirm it by saying that he's on fucking Fear the Walking Dead, which I don't know why you wouldn't have Abraham because he is the one in Texas and he's not on the show anymore. And, oh, all right, anyway. My voice is dead. I am going to get some water and let you guys comment about this because I've gone for so long. And if you stayed on for this long, cool, congrats. Uh, but I need a break. I need a break, man. I this the break until February is going to be difficult. At least it's at least this wasn't a season finale. If I had to wait fucking six months to get you know to see how the show operates without Carl, then I would have, I don't know, I would have just been frustrated. I would have had a whole summer of just constantly confused and doubting and angry. I would have been like, ugh. So, anyway, I'm glad I can get my feelings out here and rant about it to you guys, because you guys you watch the show and are very passionate about it like I am. So, with all of that being said, sponsored by Vans, not actually. I like Vans, though. <laughs> Um, all right, now that I've gone on forever without actually looking into the camera, hi. I never look at the fucking camera. I'd always just stare forward. I mean, I was reading so much stuff, too, so, all right. Anyway, thank you, guys. I have to render this. It's probably going to be hella long, but whatever. So, thank you. See you. Goodbye.